after they finish the uni- universities, there's no jobs. It's like it's like and government of positions are allocated to just like pure nepotism. Jobs are uh, it's just nepotism to build up power for one party. And another thing that's been going on since the revolution is attacks on Hindu minorities, which is like unfortunately a real thing. Yeah. So basically some weirdos decided to burn down temples. It's uh, it wasn't unfortunate. Like after August 5th, for the next couple of days, like weirdo Islamists and whatever decided to burn down temples. But then the people did step in like random. Another fun fact, the police completely disappeared because the people wanted to kill them. Like the people wanted to like, there are like these videos of you seeing just random people trying to kill police and sometimes succeeding. About 200 cops died. Another thing Ben Norton, yeah. Another thing Ben Norton said was the protesters attacking the police, which is, yeah, they are going to attack the police. And I don't know why is a left, like a leftist worshiping the police. Who gives a shit if they die? In my opinion, not your opinion. Who cares if they die? Like uh, about 190 cops were di- who died. Um, about more than a thousand people died in the entire protest. 190 of them were cops, and the people did kill them. Which is like, oh, and there's videos of them happening doing it, like in the most horrific. I would not say in the most horrific ways they were being killed, and the cops completely disappeared from the country. They were afraid of their lives. Good to see you. Hi. Oh, you're muted. You're muted. Hey, Gab. Hi. So good to be here. Excited to be here. I, I actually, yeah, like I, I enjoy RBN. Oh, great. One of the, yeah, like one of the only place that's not irritating on okay. left media. I'm glad that we're as uh, pleasing to your ears, your heart, and your mind as possible. Thank you so very much for joining uh, to talk about this subject. Um, there was some things that have happened recently as far as in Bangladesh. Um, there was a lot of news that were coming out. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to share was uh, some uh some images that had came out regarding what happened in Bangladesh. Uh, Let me see if I have my notes right here. Let me see. Let me go, let me share my screen. Because uh, there was a lot, there was many, um, there was a lot of uh, strife that was happening within the streets of Bangladesh. Uh, this is from RT. It says Bangladesh PM resigns and flees country as protesters storm palace. So, can, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I just want a second. Okay, so, (laughs) um, but yes, so um, just to let you, uh, just to go into this. uh, So the Bangladeshi uh, prime minister resigned because of strife that was going on within the country, heavy strife. If you can get us some insights into exactly what was going on there, um, as to why, uh, just give us like the 30,000 feet uh, point of view from what was going on. Because uh, I, I know it had to do with students yeah. and government workers, so if you can help yeah, us yeah. Out. So, so basically, um, okay, she's not even. She came to power in like two thousand eight, and she's been like winning elections since then. But here's the thing: like, I noticed. Okay, I have like a problem with how left. Some people in the left media have been covering this. They've mm-hmm. been saying like she was the elected pr- pres- prime minister. She mm-hmm. wasn't elected. The last time she was democratically elected was two thousand eight. After that, 2014, 2018, the last one, 2024, early February, she wasn't elected. I'll I'll give an example. Like I have, like since I've turned 18, I have never been able to vote. Like I've literally, because, and I live in Portugal, like, right? And my, the 2024, the 2024 election in February 
my dad went to see who voted, the voter list, and my name was on it. Now note, I am in Portugal, living in Portugal. I have never voted, but I was on the voter list of the people who have voted. I mean, this is just fake. This, this is not an election. Um, so basically, the protest started because of... Uh, the people like to say like affirmative action, but it wasn't affirmative action. It was for legacy admission into jobs. So basically, um, we had we had like a, a liberation war in 1971 from uh, from Pakistan, and like the thing is, this they created job quotas. Like 30 percent of government jobs would be allocated for family members of the people who fought in the liberation war. Now, no, that's like less than 1% of the population. So 1% okay. of the population will have 30% of the jobs allocated for them. And like that's like basically a way to create um, like your own cadre, like own goon of supporters within the administration, like every level of the administration. So you basically control it. And... Mm -hmm. Okay, and the people were okay with the like the originally like when the liberation fighters uh, got like thirty percent of the job allocation, then they started giving it to the children. Now it's the grandchildren, and yeah, like that was um, like just unacceptable to the people. Like one of the thing about the Bangladeshi people is like we'll like we'll accept oppression, we'll accept like you stealing our money, like but we're like a really emotional people like that. When you like start insulting, like our intelligence, for some reason, we, we, it's unacceptable. Like I personally don't even understand it. Like my thing, like I'm a communist. I'm more like on a material basis that like, if someone's stealing from me, I'm more irritated than just like someone insulting my, you know, but that's, that's my people. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So like that bothered them. And like what really turned up the protest was like um, the prime minister called the student pro it was the protests were mostly led by students like they they gave their lives as a matter of fact most of the students their children like their 17 year olds 18 year olds they wouldn't qualify for government jobs anyway but anyway they did lay down their lives to achieve the victory um and another thing uh, i've been noticing is that um uh, okay i'm going to call him out i'm i'm sorry i really like this person ben norton he had this uh he had this uh, uh editorial on bangladesh and he said that the protesters were funded by america and i'm like no it's like we had like our own january 6 but I don't I like I, I I don't know what your opinion on January 6th is, but I I don't think it's as a, that objectionable. Like it's like people mm -hmm. like we had our own version where everyone stormed the parliament, the presidential palace, and yeah. and just stole random things like the fish out of the lake and books and yeah, they stole fish. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very it's like yeah we store. And some of the people who stormed Rodin are my family. Like my sister stormed it. Like she's not funded by anything. Um, so, so it's not. But here's the thing: it um, th there is reason to believe America supported this. Like we, the thing is, America like puts his nose in every single situation, and I can't help it. Like the people. The people did want a revolution, but we cannot help if America like kind of comes in and s supports it. The reason, the way they did it, um, everyone in Bangladesh kind of knows it, but it's not official. Like if you mm -hmm. talk to a Bangladesh, random Bangladeshi and you ask him, like, do you think the American like State Department supported like your revolution? They were like, yeah, probably. It's mm -hmm. like, but it's like saying that again. Ben Norton called it a. Uh, color revolution again i really like him and i don't know what, but it's like it, it's not a kind of not a, t a color revolution because it wasn't the protest wasn't built up by them it was completely organic by the students um but to say that is a color revolution i think it's a bit too much because but they did i'll i should tell you the way they did it 
So when the protest started, the, the prime minister ordered the police to start shooting the people. And they did. They brought in the border, uh, uh, like the border guards. They started shooting at the people. They brought in the army. One of the things that the army did, they used UN vehicles, which like, you know, that they sent to like African countries to do peacekeeping in quotation marks. Yeah, like they used those vehicles, those tanks, those helicopters to shoot at people. But here's there was a bit of a conundrum within the army, though. Yeah, there was a bit of a. Um, so, the ju- like basically the junior officers kind of did not like doing what they were being ordered to do. Uh, uh, but like the generals, uh, like some of them, there was like uh, it. It was not united. So basically, um, so some of them were shooting. It was they weren't as bad as the police or the other paramilitary forces, the military army. So mm-hmm. on August fifth, like on, on August fourth, I would say on August fourth, last day, the army kind of stepped back. They started like just letting it the protesters be. They they mm-hmm. did not stop them. Like and August fifth, when the the people stormed the park parliament the president the prime ministerial palace that's the prime ministerial palace my par- apparently my parents were there they told me that that so yeah so um they stormed that the army did not do anything so people are kind of guessing the state department probably got a call with the general uh, chief of staff and was like stand down like and they he just stood down he let it be and the people kind of stormed it and the lady the prime minister ran away uh, well <laughs> the, okay so as far as uh it being like january 6th one of the things that i a lot of people don't talk about i'll say this a lot of liberals do not talk about is on january 6th the police let them in yeah the police let them in and so when people talk, oh my God, they were storming the Capitol. The thing is, like, but they were allowed to, right? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, when people talk about how it was horrible, it was like, well, yeah, it was because it was allowed to be horrible. It was allowed to to happen that way. And you know, unfortunately, you know, some people did die because of some extremists that were in the group. I would argue that. A majority of people, you know, were, uh, you know, it, they did have some extremist views, but at the same time, a lot of them wanted to, it, it was, they were cosplay revolutionaries. Yeah. It was like, it was like, they got the prize and they were like, so what do we do now? And then it's like, yeah. okay, let's go home. And then a few of them got arrested, you know, and but some of them were kind of serious but ultimately i mean you know the people who let them in were the capitol police but anyways so as far as you know what's going on there i i found it hilarious that and maybe i shouldn't find it hilarious that the the pm actually end up you know fleeing because she was scared of the people and i'm just like wait a minute Ben Dash is on to something here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, uh, for instance, here it says Bangladesh PM resigns and flees countries as, storm, as protesters storm palace. Now, to those of us here in the West, particularly people who are more, um, you know, liberal or conservative, uh, a lot of them will say, oh, my God, I can't believe they stormed the palace and blah, blah, blah. But my thing is, is like, why were the the people pushed to the point where they felt the need to storm the palace? You know, why would they feel the need to do this? Because ultimately, from what I can see, is that it was about their material conditions, their material needs, yes. their their yes. jobs. Like they were being stiffed. It, 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 you know, uh, for a. Would it be wrong of me to say that this was kind of a nepotism on steroids? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It was like nepotism on steroids. It like, and the thing is, you need to understand, like, it is so corrupt. The country is so absolutely corrupt. We have an estimate like about 
it's a kind of it's a very poor country it's still a very poor country and mm -hmm. about not, like about like 25 percent of the gdp was stolen by these people like about 90 billion dollars were stolen in the last 15 years that mm -hmm. is a crazy amount like we, we and I need you to like understand how corrupt it is. It's from my own personal uh, experience. I'm going to tell you a story. I once went to the police station to do a report. Like I needed to get my voter ID when I and you need some stuff from the police station. Me and my dad were in there, and the cops were talking to one another. One of them is like reading a newspaper, and he's like talking to his other colleagues, like chilling and talking. They were like, uh, and there was like crime stats on the newspaper, and he was like, "Hey, uh, so this crime stats are going up. You know why it's going up?" Because we're not doing enough crossfires. Crossfires are euphemism for extrajudicial killing. Yeah, so they pretend like, so yeah, like in Bangladesh, crossfire is a euphemism for extrajudicial killing. And these guys are just sitting and chilling and talking to each other. Like, dude, we're not doing enough crossfires. Yeah, that's how corrupt the country is. Like, that's where it was. Like, people cannot take it. The like the it was every aspect of corruption. We don't have a lot of like we don't have a lot of crime. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that Bangladesh is full with crime. It's not, but we do have a ton of white collar crime. Like it's just unimaginable. Like we have, yeah, yeah. That's them uh, storming the uh, prime ministerial palace. And yeah, you know what? Shouts out to the Gen Z. Like. I would I don't have the bravery to do what they did. They gave their lives to do this. Yeah, and like they like and another thing, like uh, I I've he I've been hearing like on Twitter it's most mostly leftists who I usually love. Not not really some of them I love, but then it's like they were like saying it's like by um wealthy college students. N no, you need to understand in Bangladesh uh, public universities are affordable and it's like mostly like you get in it's like even the poorest of people can afford it people with no homes homeless people can afford it it's very it's not free but it's so it's the fees are ridiculously cheap it's not it's irrelevant it's, it's nearly free right basically. it's nearly free it's near okay. public universities now the public uh, private universities are very expensive and that's for rich people but the public universities are basically free and like it's some of the poorest people, like poorest students from the poorest families who go to public university. And that, yeah, and like, it's not like rich kids, like it's not like, and the most elite university, which is like the Dhaka University, where most of the protests were coordinated from, it's like the best university in the country. Yeah, like also some of the poorest people go there, like from all over the country, because it's nearly yeah. free. And, yeah. but the thing is, after they finish the uni universities, there's no jobs. It's like, it's like, and government of positions are allocated to just like pure nepotism. Jobs are, uh, it's just nepotism to build up power for one party. And another thing that's been going on since the revolution is attacks on Hindu minorities, which is like, unfortunately, a real thing. Yeah. So basically, some weirdos decided to burn down temples it's uh, it wasn't unfortunate like after august 5th for the next couple of days like weirdo islamists and whatever decided to burn down temples but then the people did step in like random another fun fact the police completely disappeared because the people wanted to kill them like the people wanted to like there are like these videos of you seeing just random people trying to kill police and sometimes succeeding about 200 cops died another thing ben norton yeah another thing ben norton said was the protesters attacking the police which is yeah they are going to attack the police and i don't know why is a left like a leftist worshiping the police who gives a shit if they die in my opinion not your opinion who cares if they die like uh, about 190 Cops were who died. About more than a thousand people died in the entire protest. A hundred and ninety of them were cops, and the people did kill them. Which is like, oh, and there's videos of them happening, doing it, like in the most horrific. I would not say in the most horrific ways they were being killed, and the cops completely disappeared from the country. They were afraid of their lives. Um, it's and yeah, and 
the random like students took up the duties they formed like their own like militias to protect the temples they had their own traffic yeah they just anarchist form it, it was kind of anarchist it's pretty dope like yeah you should it's it's like a it's a dope thing to see like what's happening and just people stepping into the country and doing it yeah now one of the things that i am also worried about is the who the people the protesters decided protesters and the opposition parties and the military all came together and they decided to name a, a transitional government now and that's what i'm worried about the people they named the the chief advisor is a guy named yunus muhammad yunus he has a nobel prize uh, it's like he has an interview on democracy now from 2008 I don't know what I don't know what's wrong with these people, but they get very impressed by Nobel prizes and presidential medal of freedom, and he has all that stuff. So he's like a he's best friends with Bill Clinton, he's best friends with Emmanuel Macron. There's pictures of him kissing each other. It's like he, he so basically um, he created this thing called microfinance. He would which is I don't know what you how you would feel about. I'm I'm a bit agnostic about it. It's like he would give. A, high interest loans but with no collateral like to poor people like small loans but with no collateral like uh, to people who would otherwise not qualify for loans uh, but they're high interest, right they're high interest they're about they're about like 20 percent so it's it's like yeah it's like um that's payday it's, lending uh, yeah kind of kind of that's kinda. payday lending that that's just that that in itself is what i call uh, that's legalized loan sharking. You could say that, yeah. Um, so, yeah. so like some people would argue, like some people did improve, some people like could not pay it back. But then, if you can't pay it back, you can't take out another loan because uh, you've defaulted. It's yeah. it's like a whole thing. But yeah, uh, so that happened, and he got like Nobel Prize, which I find like utterly disgusting. Uh, Amy Goodman finds it very Im impressive. Um, yeah, she finds like, but anyway, uh, yeah. and the other people, like there's some good people, like uh, four of them are real, two students from the organizers. Yes, there was a teacher who was also one of the protest organizers who's like great. There's like around four or five people in the mm -hmm. cabinet that are great, but the rest are all from NGOs all funded by like um endowment for national endowment for democracy us aid like it's just some of them are like utterly disgusting human beings like um there, there's this yeah like there's just, like I'm, i have a thing with ngos in bangladesh like they i feel like they're there to like just steal money like they get money then they like one thing they did do good in Bangladesh, I'm not going to say is like uh, uh, reproductive rights. Like they they were like on that they were very good. Otherwise, they feel I feel like they're just like stealing money. Like they're ju just there to steal money. The, 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 um, yeah. And one of the things that uh, family planning, yeah, like they implemented it across. Like it's just entirely up to the NGOs. They were funded by USAID, but they did implement incredible like um uh, uh, yeah contraceptive like uh, access to con women having access to contraception and all that stuff which was like across like the most even the most rural uh, place in bangladesh has access to family planning contraceptive like stuff like that but other than that like i don't see anything impressive they have ever done for the country but yeah again like Western like USA thinks that they're, they're awesome. So it's basically I feel like they have funneled all of this, all of these weirdos into the government. Like I am worried that these people are going to sell my country into to America. Mm -hmm. And like and unfortunately, the people of Bangladesh have all become John Mearsheimers, and like they're like have all become realists because we have a country next to us called India. Who has just opened? We have they have dams. We have so Bangladesh is basically a delta where all of the glaciers from the Himalayas melt and all the water 
drains into the from Bangladesh into the sea. India has like basically dams, hydroelectric dams, levees on all of these rivers. What they do, what they did now, right now, they open the gates to one of the uh, dams. After 34 years, they said they had to do it now. They had to do it now. After 34 years, they didn't open the gates of this dam for 34 years. And they flooded half the country is now underwater. Yeah. So people have all become, unfortunately, all the people in the country have become John Mearsheimers and realists. And they will, like, work with any country that, like, they, 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 it's not, like, particularly America, but they will work with China, any country that helps them stop, like, Indian aggression. Uh, yeah. Which is like, uh, which is like an unfortunate. I hope it's not America because it's just American friends don't end up like if you look at Pakistan and like if you look at uh, Turkey, American friends don't end up in a good place. They only buy weapons. They have lots and lots of weapons and nothing else in the country. That that happened. Yeah. Y you want to ask something? Yeah, it's 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 just wild to me because. Um, you know, Bangladesh is one of those countries that we don't hear as much about in the United States. Uh, it, it's kind of one of those things where you, like for instance, you're the second person from Bangladesh I've ever met. Oh. I've, yeah. And I'm 40 years old. I, <laughs> you know, um, and one of, I, I had a former worker that was from uh, Bangladesh, but the thing is, is that we don't hear about uh, that country much. Um, and so when you find out about why, it's because Bangladesh is one of those countries where it's it's neither vilified nor it's, it's never praised. And part of me feels like it's because, you know, they may have, a, you know, somebody that's very westernized, a Western puppet that tries to, you know, do what the West kind of wants to do. You know, they'll, they'll uh, bend to the will of, you know, institutions like the IMF and the World Bank. And so it's like, well, we're not going to call them an enemy because they're they're playing along. But we're not going to praise them because, you know, they're not an imperialist power. So it, it kind of is like, you know, out of sight, out of mind. You know, that's, that's yeah, kind of yeah. like what it feels like here. And so when you hear about the students and the young people rising up against their government, for, you know, uh, having an unfair, unequal, unequitable institution, like with the hiring on of people for their government, and they're rising up, and then the prime minister flees, and the agents of the state, the police, are punished, then it's like, wait a minute, we need to start hearing more about Bangladesh, we need to start learning a little bit more about what they're doing over there, too. Because it feels like they've reached a breaking point. And I'm not saying that I want violence to happen, right? What I'm saying is I want the, the fire of change to be just as bright in Americans just as they are in Bangladeshi people, right? Yeah. Yeah, so one of the things I had a problem with, again, like some of the leftists commenting on the violence of the protests. I understand they want to be like, um, I understand they want to oppose American imperialism, as do I. But here's the thing. I, I cannot dis I cannot choose where America like in, in like involves itself in. Like I'm gonna have a revolution. And if this America like unfortunately involves itself in everything, and if they involve I can't help it. Like I'm just like a normal guy, but I would I want to get rid of the guy, my oppressor. And like I cannot help if America decides to just step in. And by the way, the, the thing, yeah, like the prime minister is now saying America, the reason America opposed her is they wanted to establish like a naval port in one of the islands of Bangladesh. And she opposed it, not because she's like some awesome person, but because she, she was like basically like a, she was basically an agent of India. She was basically doing anything India would say. Yeah. And that's why like she opposed the American expansion into Bangladesh. Um, and the people of Bangladesh, unfortunately, they have been, they hate India so much that I feel like they're going to invite another devil into the country. Yeah, which is, which is like, 
yeah, I, I don't want either of them. I I really don't. And the thing with India is India's like such like insane. I need you to understand the most people conf yeah have the yeah have the country is underwater uh wow and another thing that is worrying is some of the most satanic organizations news organizations are like doing pro bangladesh pieces like deutsche welle like the german state news agency like in my opinion they're basically nazis wow. like if you yeah if you like listen to them talk about how they talk about palestine how they talk about like uh, reparation uh, for like uh, the French getting kicked out of West Africa. They sound like Nazis, but they're doing like pro Bangladesh protester pieces, which I'm like very worried about. Which is why would you do that? You are not. I do not want to be associated with you. Like these people. Like CNN is satanic in my opinion, and they're doing like pro bangladesh pieces like i'm that's kind of worrying to me mm -hmm. yeah yeah and another yeah. thing mm -hmm. sure about the bangladesh india border like the most in um, like the most death between two countries it's not some you would think like the most death w would occur in border regions would be like south korea north korea but it's not it's bangladesh india Indians just kill our people, random people. Like, yeah, like they kill our farmers for no reason. It's, it's like they just want to show, you know, like imperialist power. They want to become the next empire, basically. Modi wants to be an empire and he's just doing insane things. And people like are not, it's obviously it's not acceptable for normal people. Isn't, um, isn't Bangladesh, I think it's like 90% Muslim? Yes, it's not ninety; it's like eighty something. But yeah, yeah. Okay, it, it's extremely. It's much. It's heavily majority Muslim country. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, from what I know, Modi is a what they call a Hindu nationalist. Yes, is, is yes, he's a psycho. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, as far as uh, from what I know, regarding uh, somebody like Modi, Modi just does not like Muslims. Um, yeah, but it's like it's not like a Modi thing. It's like an entire India. There is no, there's a bipartisan like even like the secular parties in India, uh, uh, Congress is like the same thing. Because the thing is, India, if, like if you listen to the Indian media, they have lost their minds since the revolution. They feel like because they assisted, like they assisted us in uh, the 1971 revolution against Pakistan, not because they're great people, but Pakistan was their enemy and they wanted to break up Pakistan, like. Yeah, so they assisted us, and some of these people are sounding like fascists, Nazis. They said they're just like openly saying, like I've been watching a lot of Indian media, and they've been like openly saying because we assisted them with their freedom, we due to the right of conquer, like uh, we should have like taken it over, like it's like it's like Israel talking points, and if you like look at Indians on Twitter, it's like they they want to be Israelis very bad. Wow, man. And this this kind of trips me out because I'm thinking about India's relationship with like Russia and China, eh, kind of a, a little bit with uh, with uh, Brazil. Um, but I, I'm thinking about their relationship with Russia and China and BRICS and how they're trying to create a more multipolar world. And I'm just like, wait a minute. Modi, if you are trying to unite with countries like Russia and China, especially ones that are trying to really democratize, uh, you know, the the how the world does trade and resources, you know, how are you advancing that by being the way you are to a, a, a religious population that? you know, encompasses what, uh, three fifths of the world. Yeah. Maybe more. And you're, you're, you're being hostile to them or you're being hostile to Bangladesh or you're being hostile to anybody who, uh, you know, purports to follow, you know, the teachings of, of yeah, Muhammad. Yeah. It's, it's like, you know, how do you, because look at you know how it, 
the 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 whole ah what's the, what's the word I want to use the whole basically a uh, lie about the the Uyghurs right in in yeah. China right yeah and yeah. how Chinese you know they're they are actually just off hands with when it comes to the Uyghurs but that's not the same thing for for India right yeah, when yeah. It comes but, to their but the thing problems. is like in you said like India and China and the BRICS. You need to like if people need to look at the history of India and China, they don't like. Ch shouts out to Mao. He like he went to war with India. Like India is, so basically during the British Empire, there wasn't the borders weren't as determined as it is today. Like and when British ruled India, what the British would do is they would like have these adventures into China, and just take over their land from India. Like you know, like they would move in from India go into China and say, this is mine. So there are entire provinces of India that China claims, which kind of they have the right to claim because the British just took them uh, from China. So in 19, during the Cuban Missile Crisis, it, China invaded India. China invaded India and took like miles of India. And like India can't say, say shit about that. Shouts out to China. I, I really wish instead of America, like Bangladesh has like a, you know, uh, um, alliances with China, rather. And what kind, like, the thing about India is, what is wrong with you? What incredible thing are you doing that every single country around you hates you? Like, Nepal, like, no, they nobody likes them. If you look at China, like, uh, if you look at Pakistan, if you look at Maldives, if you look at Sri Lanka, like, Sri Lanka assassinated one of their prime ministers in the 70s. Yeah, like, it's, like, what great thing are you doing that every single country hates you, around you, that hates you? Like, that sounds like another country that's very familiar to me. I yeah, yeah. Think of, hmm, I can't think of which one. <laughs> yeah, and the thing with China is, like, my opinion is that, okay, the British did that. Then why are you still claiming uh, uh, ownership of those territories, like, for, like, British adventurism? Like there are entire provinces of India that China claims, which I kind of have agree with China. They have a right to claim. It's it's yeah. But so wouldn't somebody call that um, colonialism on on China's part? Well, yeah, people would like I I wouldn't I wouldn't agree. Well, it depends on your perspective. Mm -hmm. Would you accept it? Like I don't know. What do you think? Would you accept, like, because if you were colonized by a country and that country decided to go into the neighboring country and steal their land, and now the because the neighbor was, like, I don't, I, I don't know. I, that's a very good question. I didn't think of that. So, like, now the neighbor is not powerful, but he wasn't back then. And now he the neighbor wants their land back. Yeah, I mean, because thinking about it, you know, if, if uh, occupied India was being was taking the land of the chinese right but then the china chinese go okay well we're going to steal this land from you and now it's almost like a like a tit for tat but now tet, i would say technically india is no longer occupied by the west though i mean the west still has its clutches at, at least uh at least uh you know culturally you know, in some ways when it comes to India. But the fact is that would China be willing to now let that land go and say, you know what, you're no longer being uh, ran by Britain anymore. So therefore, whatever hold that you have over uh, Chinese territory, you guys let that go. And whatever hold we have over Indian territory, we'll let it go. And we'll just let bygones be bygones. I, I don't see why that can't happen because you know, it does it does it make sense? It, it feels like I don't know if I would call it imperialism, but it's almost like a tit for tat kind of uh I'm sorry, I wouldn't say it's colonialism, but it's almost like a tit for tat land grab. You know what I mean? And it's like yeah, that period is over, so therefore each one can now let go and go, okay, you know. And plus you're yeah. in bricks together now, so it's like there's yeah. more of a more friendly relationship now too yeah like i never thought of it that way yeah yeah but like the thing is india wants to be america very bad like they want to be israel very bad like 
Mm. But the thing is, like, I I still do believe there's like parts of India that there are like good people, like real communists, Maoists. Like, um, you should look into the Indian Maoists; that are really dope. Like, um, they do like actual revolutionary, like they do try to do revolutions. Yeah. So there's like parts of India that there's still like pretty dope. I think that can be, um, e yeah. Like my biggest worry is like we're inviting the devil into our country to fight mm. off another devil and this devil doesn't leave like it's like a vampire once you invite him in he's not gonna leave yeah well you know uh, honestly this uh this story is actually ever presently changing uh especially when it comes to the interim government my hope is that the the interim government really listens to the people not just a small sector like they do here in the united states but to all the people and start to have a more equal and equitable government another question though before i before i let you go i, I would like to ask this is what about the people who are currently employed within the government who got those positions through nepotism have they been kicked oh. out or are they still oh, yeah. in there Oh, no, no, no. They're, they're, like, they are hiding for their lives. I have family members who supported that government. They're hiding. Like, I hope, like, the way they're being killed are, like, it's, like, I saw a video of the people drowning a mayor in a lake. Yeah. The mayor of a city was drowned in a lake. Like, and they took videos of it. Like, they will be killed. Like, they are trying to run away. So the prime minister of is actually in Bangladesh right now. She's trying to get asylums in uh, U.S. and the U.K., which obviously she's not going to get. Um, yeah, like I actually saw social media posts from America. Her son lives in Virginia. They were like th thinking of like, um, yeah, but they, they're insane people. Like they were thinking of forming like a gang and getting him from Virginia, <laughs> from like Bangladesh. She's living in, in America. Yeah, I, I don't think yeah Ooh. wow like they're like i have fa family members who supported the government i have like yeah they're not no way to be seen <laughs> they they are hiding look you know what's funny we all <laughs> those of us on the left will talk about oh man france is doing it you know they'll they'll spray the 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 presidential building with manure and then they'll have protests in the streets bangladesh said hold my beer <laughs> yeah yeah like yeah and i have like a criticism of that like like let's take january 6 again one of like i, I was listening to hassan which and he piker and he was like making the argument imagine if they got to aoc and my thing is like why would anyone care if they got AOC wouldn't piss on me if I was on fire why why do I care about her so much like what is wrong with you it's like it's like peasant mentality yeah it's, that's a thing from the people that do dissidents it's pretty I like that yeah it's, it's it, you know what's going on there is um, you know I I'm really I'm hoping that this is a I'm hoping that this is the seed uh, planted for a true people's revolution there. That's what I'm hoping for, because ultimately, you know, the the systems of capitalism that are present in places like Bangladesh, once that goes away, that's one, that's a whole other area where they're changing and having a more uh, equitable government. And then hopefully people within the region like for instance, like Sri Lanka and Pakistan um, and Nepal and all those other countries in the region, they take a look and say, wait a minute, they're also revolutionizing their government for a more uh, egalitarian government. What can we do? And so that's what I'm hoping for. Thank you so very much for watching my channel. And I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further, so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media 
and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. More head kisses and have a beautiful day.